So in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built this little slide out built in. So stay tuned. I said we would get into it. These are the cabinets I'm using for the pantry laundry project. What we're going to do is, this is going to be a cabinet that I want to turn into a pullout to put my laundry detergent and bleach and all that on so that I can fill the laundry which is going to be right next to it as the washing. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to, well, we're going to try to build a cabinet that will pull out in here. I haven't done it before, I can't find much online, so I think we're going to try it out. Unfortunately, I wanted a bigger cabinet, but I had to go with a 9 inch because that's all the space I could get, which makes it just wide enough for containers of laundry detergent. So what we're going to do is, I have some drawer slides that are half inch thick. We're going to try to fabricate something with two shelves in it and some supports. We'll take the door off, attach it to the front of it, and then have a normal handle on it that we can pull out. So what we're going to do is, we'll start by taking the door off. See if I can do this. We'll set this aside. Hinges right off. So we won't need those either. So I'm gonna set that aside. Alright, so this is what we're working with. This is exactly six inches wide. I already measured it. Um, ideally the shelf has to be just a hair less than that, even if it's just an eighth of an inch. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, these are going to be half inch drawer slides. We're just going to use 200 pound drawer slides on the bottom that will support this bottom shelf. And then we'll have braces to come up to make the top shelf. And then I'm going to try to keep the top shelf just low enough so that the uh, bottles will slide back in there. So I'm going to grab some MDF. So what this bottom piece is going to be is five inches because I got a half inch on each side that I need to account for. So that has to be five inches wide and then we'll go about 22 inches deep because the cabinet's about 24 deep and then we can that'll give us the two shelves we need. So what I want to do is I have some MDF and I have some plywood. I want to make the sides out of MDF and then I think I'm going to use the plywood to do the actual shelves. So it'll be a combination when it's put together of like this. Uh, so what I want to do first is I'm going to do 2 inch risers on the sides, so I'm going to cut a bunch of this down to 2 inch, and then I'm going to cut this board down to make my shelves on the table saw, and then we'll go to the miter saw and I'll cut it into length. using the same length for all of these because these are all going to be the same length. Normally I would have a stop or something on here to do this. Fortunately I don't have it set up yet. Alright, so that should do it. We have our pieces. We have our front and back panel. Now I'll put it all together. Alright, so first up, I got my clamping system here. I'm just gonna, I have the two pieces. The wider piece is my shelf, and the piece under it is just a support piece to uh, anchor. You'll see when I put the sides on, that's gonna anchor the drawer slides to it. Uh, it just gives a little more sturdiness, sturdiness for the bottom, and I'm gonna connect the front and back pieces to that too, so it'll be nice and and snug so I'm just gonna clamp these down uh, and get everything ready to go I did add glue to the underside between these two pieces and then I'm just gonna line them all up and make sure it uh, glues down really nice and nice and straight and then what I'll do is those two side pieces next to there will move on to next after this dries up so now I'm unclamping it 
uh, I don't know how long I had it set for, at least a half an hour. Moving on to the next step, so I'm just going to unclamp this whole thing, and then I got those two side pieces right there and my glue, and uh, we're going to redo this all over again. I'm going to put these two side pieces, I'm going to glue them down, and then you can see I got the Craig hole uh, uh, in the sides of those pieces because I'm going to glue it and then screw it down, and that'll hold it in place so I can continue on. So now I'm just adding the glue, and then I'll set each piece in. And then I got some Craig screws in my uh, my Craig bit. I'll anchor that down nice and tight, and then we'll let that dry. As you can see, you know, got them all put in there. Make sure they're nice and straight, a nice 90 degree. And those are going to be the uh, pieces I anchor the drawer slides to the sides of it. So now I'm clamping it all down, getting them all straight as I'm clamping one at a time. So I'm just going one by one here. I got these two just holding it, they're just pinning it up against the side of there so that I got nice tight for when I screw these down in a second. More clamps the better when you're dealing with stuff like this because you want the Craig jig will move your pieces around when you're screwing that in. I feel like to get as much pressure. I'm even going to pull out a few more clamps here just to clamp the ends together. And then that'll be, uh, that should be all good to go. And then we'll screw it down here. I got my screws. I'm just going to throw five screws in each one of these sides. The screws are nice if you ever use the Craig jig. Um, they're almost like self-tapping screws so they don't end up splitting the wood. And uh, they hold nice and tight and it's really easy to use. I like to use Craig jig whenever I can. It's just a nice handy uh, pocket hole setup. So I'm putting the last screw in here. So now I had that all dried, I'm going to take it all apart. And what I have now is the front piece. The front and back piece are the same. You'll see it up there in the upper, um, just off to the right of the piece there. But i got to unclamp this whole thing and move them out of my way. So I'm not going to use those right now. I'm going to flip this over, make sure it's all square. Add some glue. Now what I ended up doing is, I didn't end up routing the edge. I changed my mind on that. I had some quarter inch board laying around and all I wanted was just a little lip on the sides so that when I put the bottles on there they wouldn't uh, come off the sides. It would keep them centered. So I end up just using some strips of quarter inch board and then I'll just leave them proud to the top about a quarter inch or half inch and then I can just paint over it. I'm just gluing and brad nailing them in right now. But I figured that'd be a lot easier than me routing out the edge and having to go through all that trouble. So this was just a nice easy, uh, easier way to do it. And like I said it was just a quarter inch. I was able to plan for it ahead of the time after I decided I wasn't going to route her. So now I got two strips to put on this and then I'll put two strips as well on the top shelf too so that way the stuff won't come off the sides. Just throwing some brad nails in. So now I'm just doing the same thing with the top piece. While I'm out there gluing the, the bottom sides together I figure I might as well glue the, the piece to the top piece, give them a chance to uh, dry so that when I come back to work with that top shelf it'll be all nice and dry. Definitely want to make sure when you're doing a project like this make sure you add glue because um, the glue is actually what sticks. The brad nails literally just hold it while it dries. I mean you can either clamp it. In this case I wanted to keep moving along so um, it's nice I picked up this rigid brad nail gun uh, which is a battery powered one. It's a lot easier than using uh, the uh, air air powered one 
this one has uses all the same drill batteries and everything so it's really handy so here I'm just making sure the flush uh, to the bottom and then just leaving them up above like I said about a half inch so that's all done now I did both sides so now I got the bottom piece again and the sides on it you can see they're about a half inch on each side make a nice little lip so now I'm going to glue the front and then I have that board right there I ended up having a notch you'll see when I pick it up if you can see it right down there by my tool belt I notched the edges I didn't realize that I would need that notched to accommodate the drawer slides so just another thing I ran to, into as I was going so here I got my little stop at the back of that uh, on my t-track there and that way when I nail this and screw it from the front it'll hold the back nice and steady so I'll have a nice backstop just a nice system there I have on the workbench for doing all that stuff makes it real simple when you have all the little accessories and a nice little place to clamp things down I could have done the whole table with T-Track but I figured the other side is up against that wall so I'm probably not going to use it as much so now I got the front on now I'm back in the front up against the stop and I'm going to take the same which is just a, a mirror image of the front board and I'm going to glue the back one on and then I ended up having, uh, I had some screws, so I ended up just screwing it too as well as nailing it because that's actually going to take all the weight. You'll see at the end when you're pulling on the cabinet, uh, these boards are actually what's holding it all together and it's also going to be the support for the top shelves. So it doesn't hurt to add some nails just to hold it in place and then some nice screws to, uh, to keep it going. See, I'm putting the screws in. I'm just drilling now and putting the screws in. It's always nice to pre-drill. Uh, and I also had to countersink these two, so that's why I'm using that uh, countersink bit. It's a nice little bit I picked up from Rockler. It's got a little snap over thing so you can countersink and drill and then snap over a regular So I got screws on that side. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to pre-drill, countersink, and add a few screws. And this will be screwed right through the plywood into the MDF so it'll be nice and strong. That way I won't have any problems when I have this all put together. I want, obviously you know how much laundry bottles are and bleach bottles. They, they got a couple pounds to them. So I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy. So here I'm testing out the uh, detergent bottle, just making sure I get my shelf at just the right height. Because I want it to be both high enough for the clear the bottom ones, but also low enough so that I can clear the same bottles up high, as you can see me testing out. So once I got that figured out, then I can go ahead and mark some lines on the front and back in the same spot. And then uh, the top shelf is just Craig jigged from underneath, so I'm just going to glue the pieces in and uh, I'm just double checking my measurements here make sure it's perfectly level just transferring the measurement over and marking the line so this gives me a nice line when I put this shelf in here you can see the Craig holes I got in the bottom so here I'll just throw some glue on the top and the bottom or the back and the front I should say and then I'll just screw it in. It's just six screws. And that'll be nice and sturdy once the glue sets and everything. So here I'm just lining it up with that pencil mark. So I want it to be right above that pencil mark. Also when using the Craig screws you want to make sure you use the right length screw. Um, they do make different lengths and depending on what you're going through and into like for instance I have half inch board I'm going into half inch plywood so you don't want the screw to be any more than like three quarters or one inch long so these are I believe one inch screws that I'm using or one and an eighth and they're literally just short enough that they don't go through the other side so here I got my drawer slides and I made this little shim piece to shim the drawer slide because I want it to be up about a quarter of an inch from the, from the uh, bottom piece of bottom uh, style there of the rail 
and now I'm marking it off. Now these, because the cabinet's so tight, uh, unfortunately I do need to mark these holes and I will need to, uh, let me see I'm doing the other side now, but I needed to do these by hand uh, because the opening is only six inches. So here I'm just scribing in some hole marks for where I want the screws to be. And then what I'm going to have to do, you'll see in a second, is I'll show you where the holes are. Uh, I have these SPAC screws. They're little 5 8 screws. I think they're number 6s or number 8s. But they're nice. Uh, they got nice self-tapping type thread on them. And because it's so tight here, I had to use the little stubby screwdriver and just get it started. I think I screwed them in about halfway just to get them started. And then I have to finish putting them in myself here with the, with the same screwdriver. You'll see. You pull the drawer slides out here it shows the little opening in the back where you can get to the screws otherwise the uh, there's only a couple spots along the line there where you can get access to the screws and you'll notice on the back of those slides I have little feet uh, those you have to buy separately um, but those mount they're made to mount right down on the back of the cabinet so it holds the back end otherwise you could make little wood pieces about the thickness of what you need on the sides and mount them that way which I think we'll probably end up doing for the pantry cabinet but in this case it worked out perfectly so I got that now I can slide the piece in here and you will see uh, it fits right in between there so now you gotta pull these out and then uh, so these rails the thinnest part of the rail is what connects to the actual wood so here I'm just pulling them out so I can mark you'll see when I uh, when I do it here in a second the front of those should be just inside uh, the front of the metal should be about a little eighth or sixteenth back from the front of the uh, the frontmost piece of this wood. That's where you want to anchor it. So here I'm just, uh, you can see the little oval shapes uh, that I'm screwing into right now on the metal. They're adjustable, so when you do screws on there you can actually uh, adjust it up and down after you make the hole. And here I'm just, you can see those brackets down there, I'm just screwing those down so the thing doesn't come forward. Now those are the release tabs, there's one on each side. You can pull this and then the whole thing comes out. And now what I can do is level off the back side here and uh, screw in a couple more screws so to hold it in place. After, so after it's all fine tuned with the slides and everything, this is what you end up with. So you have two shelves. I got these little quarter inch strips on the sides to hold stuff from coming off the side and then you can arrange it any way you want it. Both different sizes fit on both shelves perfectly. That's it. Exactly what I wanted. So now what I'm going to do is, let me get the plate. So all we're going to do is literally just mount this to the front of it. That's why I put this big piece of board on here. Because what I can do is clamp this on here and then from behind I'll screw it in. So it'll be right on the face of it just like that. And I can li line it up right where I want it. So we'll go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is hold the door approximately where I want it. And then I'm just going to mark on the door where that is. Just so I have a rough idea. And what I'll do is we'll line it up on here. And i got these clamps. These are just called spring clamps. And then all we'll do is I'm going to put two screws up here and two screws down here from the back and that'll hold this whole thing on here. So a little tip, take your drill bit and put it in exactly the depth you want of the screw and that way you don't have to worry about punching through because otherwise it's going to punch right out the front of this so this will line it up just right, that way I can snap this right on here. Just like that. And it's all pre-drilled. And then I have my Craig screws that I'm just going to use to secure it. Just going to screw these in. like that. You can take the clamps off. And there you go. 
finished cabinet. And then I'll put a handle on it somewhere. I'm not sure if I'll put it at the top or the sides. But that's it. If you're wondering what the box is back there, I had to put some weight on it because obviously it's not mounted to the wall yet. So that's it. Works perfectly. Put all my laundry detergent in there and then I'll put this right next to the washer and dryer up in the in the laundry room. So it worked out the way I wanted it to. So the tricky part with the drawer slides is just aligning them. Usually when you screw these first ones in, they want these to be flush, the little arms on this. These are 100 pound drawer slides. Uh, plenty more than enough weight for these couple of bottles that are gonna be in here. When we do the uh, the bigger pantry ones, I got 200 pound drawer slides that we're gonna put on uh, two pairs a piece to hold all the weight. But that works pretty good. I'm happy with it. So, obviously I cleaned up my mess here, but hopefully this gives you some ideas. Um, this is obviously a nine inch cabinet. I would have liked to have gone bigger, but it's all I could fit in the area I'm working with. And I just, that's why I had to build my own so that I could utilize the most amount of space between this opening. You know what I mean? And that way I can do whatever I want in here and it, it works out perfect. So this is very similar to what the pantry one's gonna be. Just bigger, wider, it's gonna be pretty massive. That cabinet's an 18 inch cabinet, so I think that's about 14 inches on the inside. So we'll have 14 inch shelves, and then this will be a complete frame system that we're gonna have to build for that one. So we'll see how that goes. So anyways, I'm gonna take this apart, gonna coat it with a little bit of white paint, I think, and then I'll put it all back together. But hopefully uh, this video helped you. If you like these kinds of things, Definitely subscribe uh, right down below. And I'll leave a link to, I found a good website to get drawer slides on. I'll leave a link to it there. Um, I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but I think it's a great website and they got really good prices. So I'll leave that below. And if you like it, subscribe. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. Leave me some comments if you got anything, if you got a question or you just want to comment on the build. And I'll catch you in the next video. All right, take care.